Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video we are going to talk about maintain volume bone constraint. So first let me add in the armature. Let's go into the edit mode, shift D, Y and let's move it one unit ahead. Now let's go into the armature properties, turn on the name and axis. Let's make the axis 0.5. Now with the name we know what's the name of the bone is and with the axis turned on, I know what the local axis of that bone is. So I'll go into the wireframe mode so that I can see the Y axis as well. Now let's go into the pose mode, select the bone on which you want to add constraint, go to the constraint properties and then over here add maintain volume volume bone constraint uh, now to explain all of these things so first let's talk about the mode now we have three modes strict uniform and single axis so let's first talk about the strict mode i'll set this to z my transform orientation is set to local so if i scale this on the z it is going to scale that on the z and you just saw something really weird like if i scale this on the z it is being also scaled on y and x so the way this constraint work is it tries to maintain the volume uh, with the strict mode on whatever axis you select over here and by the way you cannot select multiple axis uh, I tried but you cannot uh, so you will have to stack the multiple constraints below each other if I select the z axis now by the way this is referring to the local axis and that's why I didn't even bother to just uh, keep this at the global axis. So it is going to uh, take into consideration the local axis. So now if I scale this on the Z axis, the one that we have selected in the free axis section, you'll see that my Z goes bigger like the Z axis it is scaling big and my Y and X, they are scaling down. And if I just scale Z axis down, my Y and X, they go bigger. So what's happening right now so if you press n let's go to the items now as we have selected the z axis it is going to maintain the volume uh, by shrinking the y and x and that volume is this one unit so you can increase this as well increase and decrease this okay so i'll just keep it at one so now if i scale the x you'll see that my z remains constant but to compensate with it my y shrinks down now you might think wait then why is not my z shrinking down and, and the reason why is that z is the one that we have selected so z is going to stay constant in the strict mode uh, whatever axis you select is going to stay constant so if i now scale it on the x as you can see my y shrinks down so my y scales down to compensate to compensate the volume uh, to maintain the volume now if i uh, scale it on the y you'll see my x shrinks down and my z remains the constant my z remains the constant and it is not scaling down or up so suppose if i did something like this so if i made my y 0.4 and now if i try to scale it on the z you'll see that a ratio of both y and x is being used to maintain the volume which is one unit so if i go into by the way the volume that you see over here uh, it is set uh, to unity it doesn't matter the length of the bone and from that what i mean is like if i make everything one um, and if i scale this up you'll see that my z remains constant and my y and x the non-selected axis they scale up and down to keep the uh, volume preserved and my z is constant because i have selected the z now if i select the y i can scale up and down the volume and as you can see to maintain that volume my y remains the same to show what this volume does like how this volume affects the bone is i just have to remove or you know what i actually don't even have to remove it in the edit mode if i just increase the length to two you'll see that now this bone is actually taking the unit volume so now if i increase it after this point my volume is going to start affecting it so whatever you set in the edit mode is not going to affect your bone volume so this volume is kind of a reset volume for the bone itself so do keep that in mind and it is common for all of this uh, other modes so strict mode strictly maintains the volume in all the axis 
So it doesn't matter what axis you choose. Like if I scale it on the X, it is going to maintain the volume. If I scale it on the Y, going to maintain the volume. If I scale it on the Z, it is still going to maintain the volume. And once the Z is set, like you can scale the Z individually like this. And if I scale it now, you'll see that my Z, uh, like if I scale it on the X, again, my Z remains constant to that um, 1.67 scale. And my X and Y compensates with each other to maintain the volume. So that's how the strict works. Now let me make everything unity again. And let's go to uniform. Now uniform is a really interesting one. Um, so if I select the Z and if I scale it on the Z right now, you'll see that my non-selected axis, they will um, scale down and scale up depending upon how you're scaling it. So if I scale down my Z, my Y and X, they try to maintain that volume uh, by preserving the ratio between Y and X. So suppose if I scale anything on the X, you'll see that my Z is not being affected. Also, you'll note one thing that my Y is not compensating. My um, non-selected axis is, is not compensating. So volume is not being maintained right now. So volume will only be maintained in uniform mode when the selected axis is scaled. So I'm right now not touching the Z axis at all. So my scale is not being uh, maintained. Uh, uh, sorry, my volume is not being maintained right now. So if I scale it on the X like this, uh, suppose if I make this five and I make Y twice. So now when I scale this on the Z axis, a ratio of five is to two, as you can see X five and Y two is uh, going to be maintained and that ratio will either scale up and scale down to, to maintain the volume in the Z direction. So that's how uniform works. And if you just scale everything all together, that ratio is still going to be maintained. But also my, as my Z is also being scaled up, uh, the ratio will slightly also depend on the Z axis as well. Uh, same goes in the strict mode. Uh, so if I scale it right now, uh, as my Z is changing, my X and Y value also kind of depends on Z itself. So they will also scale with some relation with the Z as well. So that's how strict and uniform works. Now let's go to the third free axis, which is single. And I'll just make everything one. Um, now you'll see that uh, in the single axis. Uh, now let's scale it on the X nothing happens in the y nothing really happens but as soon as i scale it on the z you'll see that my y and x they are getting scaled um like down you can say or scaled up depending upon the way i'm scaling the z now you might think like wait then what's the difference between uniform and single axis um so let me just scale this uh, to say twice okay so my Y just shrunk down to maintain the volume. Uh, now let me change this to uniform. And you, as you can see that it shrunk down way too much. As I said, uh, in the uniform, the ratio between Y and X is used uh, with respect to Z, okay, to maintain the volume. But in single axis, the Y and X, the unselected axis, they are completely ignored. They don't matter. So it is only going to try to maintain volume in that single axis, which is selected. So if I scale it on the Z, it is only going to maintain the volume in the Z direction. Now I know that the Y is also being scaled and X is also being scaled a little bit. Now that scaling factor depends upon, uh, I think uh, it is, uh, it does take the uniformly X and uh, the non-selected axis, they are uniformly scaled down, same, but it actually totally ignores the y, the initial Y scale that you give by yourself. So if I make this twice and if I make this thrice, it is not going to try to maintain volume in those two axes. 
and yeah the ratio is still being maintained between y and x when i scale the z and that's the only difference between single and uniform is uh, that it is not going to maintain the volume in uniform it is going to maintain the volume in the y and x as well but in single axis it is only trying to maintain it on the z axis or you can say the selected axis so if i select the y and if i scale it on the z and x volume is not maintained but as soon as i go and scale it on the y the volume starts being maintained so that's how single axis works now the next thing is the volume i think i have explained the volume earlier um, so you after even adding the constraint you can again change the volume if you want but i think it is just better to uh, scale it from over here or but in some case if you do want to just increase the volume you can uh, and you can also animate any of these values that have dot over there so you can even uh, animate this volume if you want now the next thing is the owner space now as i said in the beginning of the video i have set everything like this axis they are all working in the local axis then what's the use of having the owner set to world space now if i scale the parent bone right now they are not parented so let me just go into the edit mode select your the bone number one and this one i'll hit Control p and then i'll say keep offset so now uh this bone is now child of bone this bone the selected one so if i scale this bone now you'll see as this is in the world space it is going to take into the consideration the transform of my world bone my parent bone i mean so if i scale my parent bone you'll see that my child bone is also being scaled and I, and just because it is being scaled it is also trying to maintain the volume but now if i change the owner to local space you'll see the scaling affects uh, that bone uniformly like it is scaling it uh, with it and you can just uh, scale this locally as well so that's why uh, most of the time you will be using local space but depends on your case uh, use whatever works for you and in your project so the influence when you stack multiple of these constraints or just you or if you want to on the fly turn off and on this constraint um, in your timeline or in your animation then you can do it by animating the influence value so i guess that's it for this maintain volume constraint now i'm talking about all of this constraint uh possibly this ones as well so whatever i think is useful i will talk about all of them in their own separate videos so they all are combined in one playlist on my youtube channel for more future videos uh, and for encouraging me to make more such videos please like this video subscribe and optionally share it with your friends or anyone you want so yeah thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye